both Anna and Julia have been uh, involved in revisionist history. Uh, I'm not here to uh, share. To, I, well, here's how this event really came to be. <laughs> I, last year, uh, for the first time, offered an online course which I had developed. Uh, at the end of the course, I was both satisfied with some of the aspects of the course and terribly dissatisfied with other aspects of the course. And I went to Anna and I said, I need help. Could we pull together uh, the people who've been offering online courses here at Brock so we can share our experiences and perhaps learn something from one another? So that is the sum total of my inspiration for this event. It was my cri de coeur, my cry out of my, out of my heart for help. And so uh, what I'm about to share with you today is in fact my cry for help uh, and in a, in, a, in a rather sort of uh, shortened form. So uh, next slide. So Classics uh, 2P60 was offered for the first time uh, at this university last year. Uh, the course is on ancient Judaisms and Jewish societies, uh, and it was based on a face-to-face -face course that I had offered 12 years ago before I came to Brock. Uh, the reason I did it online is because I'd been asked several times by the department to offer a course, uh, and I kept saying, I can't. Uh, given my uh, day job, I can't commit to being in a classroom every week at a certain time at a certain hour, and I can't commit to the type of engagement with students outside of those hours that one that a student rightfully deserves uh, from a uh, instructor at Brock University. I said, so after the third year of them pestering me, I said, "Look, I'll do an online course because just as it's an asynchronous mode for the student, right? They don't have to be there at a certain hour at a certain time every week." It's an asynchronous course for me, too. I don't have to be there at a certain hour every week. So I, that's how I delved into or jumped into uh, the land of online course development and, and uh, offering. So what were the components of the course? Very simple. A very thorough course outline. And I say very thorough because in the absence of being able to harangue students week by week, face to face in a classroom, I had to pour as much instruction into the uh, online, uh, into the course outline as possible uh, in order to anticipate the problems, anticipate their questions. And the course outline was less a course light lounge than it was a user manual. Uh, there was, of course, standard, as in any course, required and suggested readings. There were PowerPoint slides available for download to the students. Um, and uh, I had prepared 15 and a half hours of video lectures in 20 minute segments. Uh, luckily, luckily, when I last offered this course in 2001 at my former institution, we had used lecture capture. So I had literally three times that in the number of hours of videos. I, I contacted my former institution. I said, who owns the intellectual property rights to those videos? And do you still have them? And the answer was, you own them. And yes, we still have them. They sent them to me. And my course, a, mo a great deal of my time in course preparation was involved in editing those videos and merging those videos in with my PowerPoint slides so that when uh, you saw me lecturing, it was the, the video cut uh, from seeing me uh, in, in, in front of a lecture, behind the lecture podium, to uh, uh, see my slides on the video and then with my voiceover and then coming back to me. I had never edited video in my life before doing this. Um, a very, very important component of the course was a 24-7 discussion forum. Each, uh, there were 12 discussion fora uh, associated with the course. Just like students would have been uh, assigned to a seminar, students were assigned to one of the 12 discussion fora. There were bi-weekly topics of discussion set in advance, and each student was required, required to uh, submit uh, on a weekly basis uh, a substantive contribution to the discussion with a minimum number of words uh, specified. Uh, there were two take-home essay uh, questions or essay exams. There was a chat room in which everybody, no matter what uh, discussion forum they were enrolled in, could participate in. And because um, I worried that some students might want some face-to-face -face contact, I had non-required brown bag breakfasts 
uh, in Market Hall at 8 a.m. Uh, once a week, and I varied the days of the week so that so that I wouldn't run afoul of some students that had an 8 a.m. class always on the same day. And that was basically the components of the course. Next. All right, here's my obs observations. And uh, within my observations, I would say, uh, is the uh, cri de coeur and a quest for help. First of all, one of the things I found was that 21st century students, unlike perhaps you or, 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 uh, or me, um, 21st century students are very engaged by video. Even in terms of quality, crappy video. Um, because obviously my videos were not you know, production uh, quality. They were just lecture capture. And lecture capture of a quality that one had 12 years ago, not what one has today. But students of the 21st century are so used to watching amateur YouTube videos that they relate very easily to amateur professorial videos as well. And so I got a lot of positive feedback about the videos. People found them engaging in ways which I, as someone who you know, went to university many decades ago, could not imagine, but they do. Second, as I said, the videos do not need to be of, of professional quality. The observation I make about students in the course is they must be self-starters. They must be self-disciplined, and they must be highly organized by nature. And um, that is one of the challenges of the course, because we all know from teaching that not all our students are self-starters, self-disciplined, or highly organized. Um, and you're simply not in their face to remind them of our obligations. The dropout rate was higher than I would have normally expected from a face-to-face -face course. Uh, about a little over 20%, about 22% of the students withdrew from the course. Um, the top third of the students in the course, in terms of quality of performance, did as well or better than they would do, in my experience, in any face-to-face -face course. They would communicate with me before, during, and after, well, excuse me, during and after the course, saying how much they enjoyed it, they did well, the grades were well, their performance was great, their, uh, their uh, participation and the quality of participation in the online discussion forum was great, they were doing really well. The middle third of the students did marginally less well than, from my experience, they would do in a face-to-face -face course. And the bottom third of the students did substantially less well than they would do in a face-to-face -face course. So these are the challenges that I need help with, need answers to. And I think maybe others may have had similar experiences. Uh, <clears throat> The other thing that I found odd is when I calibrated the workload level of the course. To me, used to face-to-face -face learning over decades of teaching, there's an in-class lecture, or in-class face-to-face time, not necessarily all lecture, but discussion as well. And then there are out-of-class assignments. And you sort of have a calibration of how much work is, an, is appropriate for the out-of-class assignments. Well, what I discovered in the course was students think of or experience the video lectures as out-of-class assignments. And so for them, in terms of scheduling their workload for this course uh, and interweaving that with the other courses that they're taking, they sort of think of the video lectures as another form of required reading. And so what students, what I gathered indirectly from students' feedback is that they found the course, the, the, the work, assigned work too onerous, which for me was incomprehensible, but not for them. I assumed that they had full schedules in face-to-face -face courses, so for them, scheduling in the, watching the videos was akin to scheduling in the time to do the readings. Uh, I also found that too often than I would like, the participation of students, the written participation of students in the online discussion fora was less substantive than I would have wanted. And I think I know the reason for that. And the reason for that is there's how they scheduled their time. They weren't doing the stuff in the right order. They would fall behind in doing, watching the videos and doing the readings, but they were required to, do the, to participate in the online forum weekly, and therefore, too often, they were 
trying to fulfill their obligation to engage in the discussion forum without having completed all of the assignments that would have uh, been necessary for them to do so uh, effectively. And so that's my sharing. I consider the course a modest success. Uh, it has its problems. Uh, I'm doing it again. And uh, I've recalibrated the workload. Uh, and I have introduced a, uh, a, uh, a new video at the very front end of the course that is kind of, here are the lessons learned from last year's students that might help you so that you do as well as you can in this course. I actually brought the video with me to show you how amateurish uh, videos can be, uh, but nevertheless, students still appreciate them, and I don't have time to show it. You want it? You were pretty close, so you did it's exactly 10 minutes. Do you want to show a little bit? Can you show a little bit? Go back to the video so you can see the front piece. Just scooch, scooch it back. There. I don't know if you have any sound. Yeah, it's going to start in a second. It was a little bit loud before. This was simply done with my laptop computer. That is all. I want to warmly welcome you to this online course on ancient Judaism and Jewish societies. Please enjoy. It's about six minutes long. But my point is, that's just me in front of my computer. I did the PowerPoints. I merged them together. All of these skills I hadn't, didn't have a, a year ago. It's complete amateur production. But for a student's point of view, it works. And uh, if I can do it, you can do it. So thank you. Thanks, sir.